McLaren F1 chassis 069 or R533 OGF has a great story because it was a half million pound car that was bought new by a gentleman who had an annual salary of just 51,000 pounds. Talk about punching above your weight. It wasn't just the one McLaren either. Our man Munro bought a GTR Longtail chassis 27R to go racing in the British GT Championship. Obviously Munro was impressed by the GTR because he sent the road car back to McLaren in 1999 to have it fitted with the high downforce kit and to be painted black. Speaking of high downforce, it was around this time that the forces from on high came down on Munro as his employers became suspicious about his lavish lifestyle. And of the hundred cars in the world and the hundred owners, we could only find one who was prepared to stand up and be counted. His name is James Munro and he's an accountant. Not only does he have his own road car, but a long tail racing version and a whole backup team of mechanics and technicians. Honestly, it was, uh, we were down at a test track and it was the most scariest thing you can ever imagine because you're suddenly driving this car that's capable of such huge speeds. And it's not just the ultimate speed, it's the, it's the pickup and the power that you can generate. You just put your foot down in first and you feel the car's going to kick sideways. I mean, I was genuinely scared. All these things take time to get used to. I have been down to the shops in it um, with the wife and, the, and my son. I've done 170 on the M40 ones. But you've got to be aware of that speed and the, and the, the whole speed differential. Boys have toys and you do stupid things because of cars. And sure enough, the fraud squad got involved and he went on a five-year sabbatical for taking money that wasn't his. The car was sold to settle the debts, finding a buyer in the USA, and all this took place before the odometer had even reached a 1,000 miles. The car was then tied up in even more red tape when it went stateside, spending a further five years trapped in the US customs system. I believe it has been sold twice since to buyers in the USA and Germany, but from what I understand, it has never properly left McLaren in the UK. It's all getting a little bit, you never actually own a Patek Philippe. It was sold again in 2016 with a mighty 2,800 miles on the clock and since then someone has finally managed to stretch the legs of this car, totting up more than 4,000 trouble-free miles between the 2016 sale and today. And by trouble-free, I mean free from bureaucratic squabbling, red tape, embezzlement and fraud investigations. It was seen most recently in London, now finished in a removable paint film to match the owner's Ferrari 250 GTO and it certainly makes for some attractive photos. The last MOT was done on the 19th of July 2022, with the odometer at the time showing just 6,279 miles.